Um, Senator Fisher. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for being here today. There's a lot of questions that are around FTX's self-minted exchange token, FTT, and it seems clear that FTX and Alameda Research used FTT and the token, I think it's pronounced Solana, uh, to inflate their own valuations and then misused it as collateral in their risky business investments and their ventures. So, Mr. Chairman, would the Digital Commodities Consumer Protect Act provide the CFTC or the SEC regulatory authority over transactions in FTX's exchange token, the FTT? So, um, from my understanding, and um, there was a, um, a sort of a compensation mechanism with the FTT token. There was an incentive mechanism. And I'm just sort of talking uh, in real time here. Based on that incentive mechanism, it probably uh, suggests characteristics that are more like a security and not a commodity. If that's the case, th this entity you're talking about is offshores, but we, let's assume it's onshore, then, then there would be onshore being in the US and there would be authority within the SEC to oversee um, uh, that, that organization. Under the DCCPA, would the CFTC or the SEC have regulatory oversight over the Solana token? So uh, I, I don't want to opine on the Solana. I, I think either way, if, if we, we, we consider Solana a commodity under the DCCPA, that authority would be provided to the CFTC. Um, if Solana and, and work needs to be done, investigation sort of analysis needs to be done, if Solana is a security, then the SEC has existing authority to police the Solana token. How many of these tokens are traded on the FTX US platform? I, would, the, would, this, would this CTA or the CFTC have spot market oversight? If, if on under the proposed legislation. Under the proposed legislation, the CFTC would have authority to register spot exchanges. So in that scenario, then the FTX US entity would have been required to register with the CFTC. We would have had to go through a process to figure out which tokens are commodities and which are securities. The commodity tokens would have been listed on the CFTC registered exchange. And I think we've talked about this there is likely going to be dual registration, which is not uncommon in our financial markets between securities and commodities. And with that registration and that lens into the registered entity, we would be able to prohibit conflicts of interest. So that's going to be helpful in the future. It's going to be, it is, it is, Senator, it goes to the core of the issue. It is critically important. It is the gap that exists that provides and presents customer protection risks. Okay. With the Digital Commodities Consumer Protection Act, it instructs the CFTC to write rules and guidelines for all aspects of the legislation, including rules related to customer protection, margin, or leverage trading of digital commodities, conflict of interest, lending activity, reporting of trades, and other information, and stable coins. So, Mr. Chairman, what kind of timeline and rulemaking process do you expect to take place if this would become law? Senator, a tough question. It to takes you guys forever, let's be honest. Uh, we would work vigorously and hard to get this done. I've obviously been a huge advocate for authority and understanding the risks that exist every day um, that, that goes by without action. I, I'm not, as the chairman, I'm not willing to accept that responsibility. I, I quickly, just for 20 seconds, using the post-financial crisis experience as an example, the CFTC was able to implement over 60 rules, significant rules, over the swaps market in a period of about three years. So if we can cut that 60 number, and it would be cut significantly with the DCCPA, probably down to single digits, I am confident that we would do everything in our power to get the rules done as soon as possible, and hopefully within a 12-month to 18-month basis at would most. It, would it be helpful if Congress would provide more guidelines? 
around the statutory provisions? Yes. Well, it's a difficult balance because as, as drafted now, and again, we need to take a fresh look at the bill given the circumstances of the past few weeks, but it's a balance between providing sufficient statutory authority and direction, but not too much, not too prescriptive, such that the agency can't evolve with the marketplace um, through the rulemaking process. Obviously, as you know, the statutory process, the legislative process is a key critical component, but the rulemaking process, which goes through the APA, the public uh, comment uh, and reporting period, this is a critical element of the process. And I think as drafted now, notwithstanding some changes that we may need to make given the circumstances of the past few weeks, it's drafted in a, in a, in a, in a very good way that balances prescription and direction with enough flexibility to evolve with changing technology. Mr. Chairman, when you were uh, here last before the committee, you and I had what I thought was a really good exchange on the important role that state security regulators play in our, the patchwork of financial regulatory systems that we have. And as a former state uh, securities regulator yourself, you know that state security regulators have a strong record of protecting and educating investors in matters involving those digital assets. But I I do worry that communication between the federal and state regulators is lacking, uh, specifically as it comes to these digital assets. Do you uh, support inviting state security regulators to have a seat at the table and be more involved in, in the federal advisory boards and working groups related to these assets? Senator, absolutely. Uh, I was talking to Senator Tuberville about this before um, the hearing started um, and mentioning, uh, you know, Senator Brown submitted for the record the, the letter from NASA, which was submitted uh, yesterday. Um, I, I spoke to the head of NASA, Joe Borg, a few weeks ago just to share notes on what's going on with FTX. As you and I discussed the last time I was here, this is, and in my experience as a state regulator, this is boots on the ground at the local level. It couldn't be more important to have state security regulators working with local officials, working with local investors and local um, communities to make sure people understand the risks and understand uh, information that they need in order to invest their money appropriately. Thank you, and thank you for the work you do. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll